So today we are going to further explore this idea that some of you have already been noticing that when you have this kind of cyclical or repeating pattern, you know, it's finding the integral, finding the derivative, finding the integral, finding the derivative. So why don't we just do it all at the same time? And some of you even notice that the signs alternate back and forth. So uh, there's actually a method called the tabular method for repeated integration by parts. Okay? So it's just a way of organizing what we're doing here. And you can use this to integrate the following forms, which hopefully you're pretty familiar with now. We have x and then e to the x here. And then we have x and sine x, and then x and cosine x. So, Mr. why do we use e? Why not just keep it at 4? Oh, what? Why do we use e in this? Why do we use 4? E is a number. Yeah, but like four. E is a number. I know. Why can't we show four? Because it's not a four. Because E is a number. No, no. Because I like laughing. Then you have all the problems with the base chain. Okay, why do we sign? What do you laughing? Okay. Okay, so. Or the worst is when you're doing it, but like. Anyway, question time is over for a little bit. I'm just done. I'm good. So I, I changed this order around a little bit. The book starts with writing down alternate signs, but if you don't know how many rows you need, that really doesn't help me. So what we're going to do is repeatedly differentiate u until you obtain 0. Okay. And so you still have to find u, and then it says repeatedly integrate v prime. And v prime is also what we know as dv. And I think that's the language we were using last time. Then you write down the alternate signs. And then you're going to multiply column 2 by column 3 um, following the arrows. And I'll show you where those arrows are in a second. So here, our first example is the integral of x squared times e to the 3x dx. So we still want to find u and du. So u, in this case, is going to be x squared. And D, um, we also want to find dv now. Okay. And it's e to the 3x. Now for the e's of this, we're not actually going to write our dx. We're just going to assume it's there all the time. When they ask you for what dv is, you do want to write it. But, but in a tabular method, right, this is just for speed and, and ease of use. And then the final answer is what we're looking for. So first thing you want to do is look in this column and find all the derivatives of u down to 0. Okay, So x squared, derivative is 2x. Derivative of 2x is 2. Derivative of 2 is 0. And since this is pre-planned, the boxes fit perfectly. Okay, It's not going to happen <laughs> like that, obviously, in your assignment. It should probably be pretty good. <laughs> Next, we want to integrate e to the 3x okay, as many times as we had to derive u. Okay? So integrate e to the 3x. So we want to think about that e to the u du type of situation. Okay? So you can use this over here for scratch work or whatever. So if we have integral of e to the 3x dx, that's going to be... 1 third e to the 3x. So we see that du was 3, so we had to put the 3 in here and the 1 third out here. So we do get 1 third e to the 3x. And when you're looking at e to the, e to the whatever, we're going to have a pattern as we keep integrating this, right? Because the, the constant in front doesn't actually change the integral, it's just the factor in front. So it's going to be 1 third times 1 third e to the 3x, which would be Another. 1 ninth e to the 3x. Okay, did everybody get that? So is it 1 the derivative of the u to the power of however many u I think it made sense. Right. Like for, for 
for the uh, which part coefficient in front coefficient would you take the the uh, the derivative of derivative of u yes of this u, of u <laughs> the three x yes and then put that to the power of n which would be the representative of how many times you had to do this have that minus one yes right. so this would be one over twenty seven you did the three x. Is this all we're doing? Mm -hmm. okay. Now, for the alternating signs thing, we're going to start with positive, and then we go negative, then positive. Why? Do you always start with positive? Always, yeah. always start with positive, and then alternate the signs. Just like that. Yep, just like that. The reason is, if we think back to our formula for integration by parts. Remember, it was uv minus the integral of v du. So that's why you do minus the integral. So that's why the second one is minus. Okay. And then as if you have to keep doing integration by parts the second time, you're going to have minus a minus, which is going to be positive. The next time will be minus a minus a minus, which is back to minus. Okay. Oh, my gosh. So here's, here's how we do this now. If we think... In terms of the integral, we're going to end up following these arrows. So this positive sign is going to apply to this x squared. And then this x squared is going to multiply by the integral of v prime. Okay, And that becomes the first term in our answer. Oh, because it's d. So positive x squared times one third e to the three x. Wait, is that because that colon is d? Is <coughs> yes, this was d. That's originally d b and then it's v b. Yeah, v capital v, <laughs> so on and so forth. All right, so there's our first term, and you just keep going down in the same manner. So this negative is going to apply to the two x. And then it's going to multiply by, diagonally, 1 ninth e to the 3x. Here's your minus. So this is just a, a more, like... It's just a structured theory. method for finding all the derivatives and all the integrals and then combining them all at once. So this is, like, faster? Faster. It's going to take forever to do Okay, and then the last one, the positive applies to the 2, and then the 2 multiplies 1 over 27e to the 3x. Okay, and this is what you noticed, Cherish, when you had to say, oh, the derivative has to go down to 1 dx, yeah. or just to dx, and that's what we're looking at. Now this last one, if the derivative is 0, notice if we multiplied, it'd still be 0. And so there's n no, nothing more to do here. And all we have to do is simplify this. So all in all, uh, we're going to put our fractions first, 1 third, then our x's. And then at the end, we have our plus C. Now, could you pull a third out since it doesn't matter what the coefficient is? You can pull an e to the 3x out, and you yeah. can actually pull 1 27th e to the 3x out. Yeah. A and for me, if you get it to this form, that's fine. Sometimes the answers in the book, depending on who wrote them, they like to factor out the greatest common factor. Sometimes they don't. But if you can get it to this, I will be happy. All right. What's um, that stuff you did in the red on the left? This right here? Yeah. This was dealing with finding this column.
can you go through finding antiderivatives of e, just like maybe generally? I, like I, we did at the beginning of class? Yeah. Sure. Just real quick. I get super mixed up. Yeah. So this is what we're looking for. E to the U, du, uh -huh. and it just equals e to the u. Uh -huh. So what happens, if we just had e to the x dx, that's just e to the x. Right. Now as we put something up here, like 2x, okay, now we don't have u du, because u is 2x, and du would be 2 dx. So you can see um, our u's right here. And then du, we have a dx, but we need an entire du. So we've got to put that in right here. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, to make sure that everything's still balanced, if we multiply something by 2, we're going to have to multiply by 1 half to balance okay. it out. Now, if we rewrite this, we can see this as 1 half times the integral of e to the u du. Okay, you see how 2 dx equals du, so I'm just replacing those two with du. And then the, the 2x is just u right there. And now if we just go to our basic formula, right, the integral of e to the u du is just e to the u. So we know the 1 half stays in front, then it's e to the u. Then all we're going to do, again, is substitute in for u, gotcha. and we're going to substitute 2x back in there. If, um, when was it that you just did e to the same thing, whatever it was, and then did like a chain rule type thing, and multiply that entire thing by the derivative of the exponent. Was it, is that finding the derivative? That's finding the derivative. So finding the integral, you're, you're going to multiply by the reciprocal. The reciprocal of, of the, derivative. the derivative of the exponent? Yeah. Hmm? Okay. <laughs> yeah, so. That's, that's easier for me to so, put in instead of all the steps you did. Just yeah, so Just what like if that. we had. Um, I still did. Yeah, so it's really 1 over the derivative okay. of u. Okay. Okay. That's, okay. Yeah, thank you. So I guess we could do that. That's just what I need to do. Yeah. So you just add that little part in. Okay. And then you're good to go. Thank you. Cool.